I'm Maureen Vallatori, and this is Spilled Salt. It's a podcast on the thrills and spills from the food, beverage, and agriculture industries. And today, I think we have more spills than we have thrills, perhaps, for the first time. My guest is Warren Zeiser, and he is the owner uh, and CEO owner of We Rise Consulting. Um, Warren has worked with a lot of food and beverage industry companies over the years, which is one of the reasons why I wanted to have him on the podcast. But he talks today about um, some of his experience in totally turning companies around, like, you know, 30 days from closing their doors to um, being able to save a company and, and turn it around into one that is highly successful. We also talk about great leadership, um, as well as bad leadership. And so that's the kind of spills that Warren talks about a little, some of the things that he sees in poor leaders, um, that are indicative of opportunities for improvement. Let's call it. Enjoy the conversation. Hey, Warren. Hey, what's happening, Maureen? How are you? I'm great. I'm very excited to have you tell your story today. How are you? I'm, I'm doing great. Cold January day. Good to be indoors on the phone with you as opposed to outside shoveling. So, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so I've been working really hard to get my steps in every day. And so we're at the part of the year now where I'm checking the temperature to determine what time of day I'm going to take my walk. Cause I like to go outside. I like to like get fresh air and, you know, kill two birds with one stone. So I hear you. I'll, I'll be going this afternoon. Cause it was 14 this morning. So. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so in today's conversation, I'm going to, um, ask you a bit about your work experience. And so that's the place where I typically like to start. So you've spent 17 years self-employed for we rise consulting, but you've had some other, in-house roles along the way as well. So can you start us off by talking a little bit about your work experience? Yeah, uh, I started my first company. I was um, 23 years old, I think 23, and I became a partner in a business. I was a sales guy for the company, did that for a couple of years. And of course, if you're a good salesperson, that immediately means you're a great leader. So they promoted me to manager and then to partner. Um, had no idea what I was doing, but I figured it out. And I ran that company for about 20, uh, 22 years. Uh, we built it to $70 million in revenue, 30 locations across the country. It was great business. I saw an opportunity to make an exit. I left. I then went to work in the corporate world for five years. I liked it, learned a lot. Mm -hmm. It didn't, didn't fuel my entrepreneurial fire, I guess. And uh, then I took over a company called Mastriani Bakery, which is in upstate New York is kind of like the, the, you know, most beloved Italian bread bakery, you know, in every grocery store up and down the Eastern seaboard. So I did that and did a pretty cool um, deal there where we saved the company and then sold it. And, uh, and then after that, I started We Rise and, and I, I, it's actually been about seven years. I had another, mm. I had another consulting business on the side, but yeah. We Rise has really been seven years and that's just been working with some of the coolest companies on the planet. And, uh, it's been a good, good seven years. That's awesome. I look forward to asking you more about that, but before we jump over to that side of things, I want to. I want to emphasize something about your work experience that you just mentioned. You're using the words like took over and you ran the company. So, and you were young, you were very young at the time, yeah. right? Yeah. So were you truly like, were you CEO in those roles or oh, yeah. Yeah, so, so what, my, what was that like? <laughs> um, 23 and they said, and, and the owners of the company, the original founders of this food company said, Hey, look, you know, we think you're doing great things. We want to make you a partner. You can go anywhere in the country. And, and I flew around the country. I mean, every corner of the country and just, I chose Albany, you know, not Miami, not, not Los <laughs> Angeles, you know. Hey, there's a lot to love about upstate New York. And, and I did, I did choose it because I'm from Long Island and I wanted to be close to home. Didn't want to live my life away from my family. So that's what I did. Um, but <clears throat> I took over and they just literally airdropped me into Albany and said, bye. And then you got to figure it out. And I was a horrible, horrible 
entrepreneur, terrible business owner, terrible leader. And I figured it out over time. I started to, I had some really humbling moments and, and I learned what running a great company looks like, building a great team looks like, and most importantly, what being a great leader looks like. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, I, I figured that out at a very, very young age. It took me a long time, and I wish I had somebody yeah. to guide me and tell me the stupid stuff I was doing, but, <laughs> I, you know, I'll take the lessons, you know? Yeah, right, right. Yeah. So that is the work that you're doing now is to help give that guidance to current companies, right, with We Rise. So talk about that, the work you've been doing for the last seven years. Yeah, so I, in my past, through especially through my food company, what my job was was to help the company grow. So we were hiring salespeople, training them, and then mo and it was very important for me to hire managers, leaders who could run the, each ind individual location. So I taught leadership every day, and I, I loved it, and I happened to have a knack for it. And uh, for years, I, I honestly, Maureen, 15 years, I've been saying, someday, someday I'm going to do this thing. And and then I sold off Mastriani Bakery after I left my food company and I sold off Mastriani. I'm sitting on my front porch on a July afternoon and the first time since I was 10, I didn't have a job to go to the next day. So I said, this is it. You know, this is the shot. And I, and I, and I just have a passion for for great leadership. I geek out about leadership every day. Like you want to talk about leadership. I'll move in and we'll talk about it every day, all day. I love <laughs> it. I love it. What, as much as I love great leadership and seeing people grow as leaders, I absolutely loathe bad leadership. I can, it drives me insane when I see it. I see it. And the thing is you get plagued with it. Everywhere you go in life, whether you walk into a restaurant or a supermarket, or a dry cleaner, you're seeing good and bad leadership. And, and yeah, it's so I just like the idea of taking a good leader and making them great, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and all the, mm -hmm. the fun things that come with it. What are some of the you mentioned you loathe bad leadership. And I think when you work on it, right, I've, I've spent a lot of time over the last handful of years really my goal was to become a remarkable leader you know some like using that word very intentionally i wanted to be a leader that was remarkable that was remarked on of i wanted people to continue to grow up and in their career and say i had that one boss that changed my life i wanted to be remarked on i can also spot bad leadership because of the work that I've done there, what are some of the things that you see when you say bad leadership? What are some of the examples that you typically see? Um, I think the first one is people who are not genuine. I, mm. I think that's where it begins and ends. You got to be genuine. If you're not a good, <laughs> I hate to say, but if you're not a good human being who yeah. actually gives a damn about these people who, <clears throat> yes, they work for you, but they're they're carrying out your vision, your company, your dream. <clears throat> you better give a damn about them. Mm -hmm. And and I think the thing that saved me when I was younger um, from all the dumb decisions that I made as a leader, so I, but I truly cared. Even then, I really yeah. cared about them. So I think yeah. people who are just not genuine and don't care, I don't know how you fix that. You gotta, mm -hmm. You've got to come go go in a yurt somewhere and smoke yourself out until you like, what do they call it yeah right. right and 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 figure out what you stand for as a leader because you, you have to care i think the other one is and another one is fear we are i especially today leaders are so afraid to make courageous decisions mm. and and you know again the, the, i say this all the time right there is no courage in the absence of fear. It's that fear that you push through and you and you make the right decision and, and, and it's courageous. But those decisions are oftentimes A, risky, and or B, unpopular. Mm. And I see leaders mm. today just hiding behind that fear and mm. not willing to make the unpopular decision. Look, the reality mm -hmm. is you're gonna sometimes piss people off when you're a leader. 
you mm -hmm. and, and you're going to be misunderstood. You're going to have people that don't like the things that you've said or done. It's going to happen. You have to push past that stuff, right? There's a, a book by Brene Brown called Big Magic mm -hmm. that I read years ago. And there's, I'm paraphrasing, but the gist is fear can come along for the ride, but it can't drive the car. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's what kind of sticks for me too, is, you know, when I have to let a colleague go because it's not a right fit and we can't yeah. come back from it. Right. You know, that's a, that's a tough one, you know, that is kind of an example of what you're talking about, right? Where you have to make the hard choice for the betterment of the team and for the company and for where yeah. everyone's going and not everyone's a fit, you know, but that's fear can come along, can't drive a car. Yeah, I, I gotta tell you, uh, you know, I, I look back on the past few years and, and I do have this knack for finding these 35 to, 50 year old entrepreneurs, right? Mm. In that middle, I'm going to say younger, but right. And, and they, and there is this absolute fear of making mm. a decision that's going to negatively impact a person. And mm. my job is to coach them through that. I'm like, look, I understand you're loyal to that one person, but are you telling me that you're going to let your loyalty to that one person affect the loyalty and responsibility you have to the other 80 on your team. No way. They're, they're not the right fit. It's not good for you. It's not good for them. It's not good for the rest of the team. You got to make that call. And the fear that come, I'm going through it right now with three clients, right? And we're guiding. Mm, wow. Through, really? Yep. Yep. And guiding them through. And some of them, it's going to take two weeks to figure it out. Some of them have been, I've been working on them for two months to get them to mm -hmm. figure it out. Uh, but eventually they make the right decision. And I always predict with them in six months, we're going to have a conversation about this day. And you are going to say, I can't believe I waited so long. This was the best thing I ever did. It, it happens every time, you know? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah. So I think, I think fear is a big one. Yeah. Yeah. I think that that's a great point. And if I, if you don't mind, I could say two yeah. more quick things about bad leadership, a people who are impulsive, who don't think about right there it's right up there <laughs> imagine what's possible if you th imagine what's possible if you think before you act leaders need to think through their decision and then mm. move right make mm -hmm. a decision mm. and and then lastly i think is selfishness people who put themselves first and it's mm -hmm. all about ego and them and that's just terrible leadership mm -hmm. yep couldn't agree more so on the flip side of that, one of the things I had down that I wanted to ask you about was like common themes that you see. And, and I was especially interested to bring you on the podcast, Warren, because you have deep experience in the food and beverage industry. Mm -hmm. You've worked with a lot of food and beverage clients over the years um, in a lot of different ways, too. So what are some of the themes that you see? And if there's anything in particular that's that's specific to food and bev great but if it's just general I think that's okay too what are some of the biggest things like when we think about positive outcomes that your clients experience after working with you what are some of those um i definitely think that one of the big ones is getting it's it, it's said to me all the time is getting them out of the weeds and mm -hmm. and you know from my very first second client that was the comment that the owner of the company made. He said, I spent five years running this company from the weeds. Mm. He said, and in six months, you took me out of the weeds and I'm actually running the company from, from up here. Mm -hmm. um, so that's definitely a big one. I will say kind of to piggyback on what I said earlier, courage, you know, mm -hmm. um, I think leaders, it's a lonely spot, right? When you run a company, you're supposed to know, everybody thinks you're supposed to know everything and make all the right decisions and have all the answers. And mm -hmm. it's just not true. You're a human being who's going through some things for the first time. And you, yeah, you don't always know what the right answer is. Having somebody who has been there, number one, mm -hmm. and been there a lot. B, uh, number two, I approach it from as if I'm like your business partner. 
I don't have mm-hmm. an agenda. It's not my agenda. I'm not furthering my agenda or doing what's best for me. I say this all the time. It's I try to be the very best I can at my job, so much so that I'm going to get myself fired. And that's right. what happens. Like I get myself fired all the time. Yeah. Because you've got to get them to the point where they don't need you anymore. But mm-hmm. that my average engagements are two years, two and a half years. People stay with me a long time. Mm-hmm. Because we're we're constantly like somebody just called me two minutes before we got on this meeting, and I said, "Dude, I can't talk. You got two minutes. Tell me what it is." <laughs> he just yeah. needed to talk to somebody real quick, you know. And and I mm-hmm. think I give them that that ear, mm-hmm. and then I always let them know it's okay. You're gonna make the right decision, even if you make the wrong one first, you know. Yeah. So I think there's a we are exposed and vulnerable sometimes as leaders and I'm the guy that's going to be there. I'll be a little bit of a safety net, but I'm also going to tell you it's okay. It's, it, mm-hmm. If you mess it up, it's okay. You're not perfect. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. So, yeah. And it's kind of, it's kind of like a gut check, right? That they have you to call as a gut check to say like, I'm not crazy. Right. Like this is kind of, this is, this is, this feels weird and it is weird. Right. Yeah. And like, you can kind of be there mirror or you know yeah a sounding board for them to bounce back but it's also helping them build their own confidence when you speak of courage right that every it. time they do that gut check it kind of comes back of like yeah i was right i love i absolutely love that and, it, and it's true like i always say it i i don't i mean i look i do believe i have creative ideas and I have a very certain way of thinking that it's always about seeing solutions, seeing opportunities and solving. That's it. Mm-hmm. That's, that's, that's all that's going through my head. But I believe that most people have the answers. They have no idea how to bring it to the front, mm-hmm. how to act on it courageously, and then how to build the strategy. Like they know what to do. They don't know mm. how to do it. So my job is, it's amazing. I go into a room and you, I will talk about things and people say, oh, we've been, you know, I'll pr- present an idea and let's say, we've been talking about that for years. Okay, well, what happened? Well, well, we didn't, we never did it, but we were talking about it. Right. Look, it's a really good idea. I thought of it, you thought of it long before I did. So let's yeah. get to work on it. And right. so that's, I think, what I, I'll bring. Mm-hmm. We... It's interesting to make that parallel too when you put it that way, because we at Agency 29 kind of provide a similar service in the strategy and marketing right. that we provide for clients too, right? That it's all about helping them understand and see what the potential is and then set the plan in place and just do it, right? So I think that that's, that's something, it's interesting to hear you say, that the strategy and the execution or implementation is one of the frequent themes that you're helping them solve, right? right? Because it's Same true in many aspects of someone's work. And I'm sure that especially for food and beverage brands that you could apply that same concept to manufacturing, to mm-hmm. launching a new product, right? To various aspects of the business too, of well, yeah. I've been thinking about a new SKU for a while, And your job is to kind of help push them to, and then what, (laughs) right? Exactly. Yeah. It's funny. Somebody asked me a while back, Hey, are you concerned that, and I'm I'm sure you get the same thing. Are you concerned now with AI and chat GPT, like Mm -hmm. uh, that you're going to become obsolete? And I I, like, I was crying and laughing, but like, it's not the, I, I think you can get answers anywhere. Right. Yeah. You can, sure. you can get an answer. I can read a book. I can Google it. I can use AI. I can ask a friend, right? Whatever. Mm-hmm. Getting the answer is not the hardest part. It's figuring out how the hell do I coordinate all the pieces? Mm-hmm. Right. I'm going to do yeah. this thing. Let's, you know, in your world, it's marketing and we're going to have, if I could Google how to grow your business you know, what's the best business practices for a, a CPG brand and uh, on, when it comes to marketing? Okay, right. there'll be a whole bunch of opinions and answers. Right. Show me the person who knows how to actually do it. And that's mm-hmm. where somebody like you comes in or me, like, 
-hmm. We have the map, mm -hmm. right? I always say that if you were hiking and you come to the mm -hmm. fork in the road, I'm not going to go figure it out on my own. I'm going to ask the lady with the map. Yeah, right. <laughs> That's you. That's you. Right. Yes. You, I think that I'm going to connect two dots. You mentioned that like you're helping them kind of coordinate all of the pieces. I want to go back to some of your very early experience that you were talking about where you made some very major turnarounds in the companies that you were working on early in your career where you were in the leadership role. And I'm sure that that's also true for the leaders you're consulting and guiding, right. you know, to do their own turnarounds. But what are your thoughts on that parallel, right? About like connecting dots and how that relates to major turnarounds for some of the companies that you've worked at? Yeah, I, you know, I remember the first turnaround that I had to do was actually in my, in the food company that I worked at Horizon. And there was a location that was struggling. It was run by the company. It was doing poorly. They were going to close and they called me and asked me if I had an interest in taking it over. And I, you know, it was, it was two hours away. I really wasn't highly, it wasn't in my thought process, but I'm like, all right, I'll do it. And we went down there and in a year, we took it from last in the company to second in the company out of 30 locations. And it really was getting, I mean, you know what it's like as an, you're getting the team rallied. And if mm -hmm. you don't want to be a part of this thing, the, out you go. Yeah, no right? doubt. Like, I'm going to give you no reason to doubt me. I'm going to, I'll put you first, but we got to get this thing fixed. And either you're going to be part of the solution or you're not. But mm -hmm. one thing I know, failure will not happen. It's not happening. Mm -hmm. And and we turned that thing around and we had a really good group of people. And interestingly, the guy who was running the company at the, that location at the time, he had to, he stayed hmm. and, and he had to then answer to me. And he was like 15 years older than me, which was most of my life that I had to deal with. So I was used to it, Yeah. but he was a really good guy that the company left high and dry. Mm. And he said, they used to call me Z like Z uh, I'm in, like, I love your energy. I see what you've done with the other locations my ego will not get in the way you take over you tell me what needs to be done and what you need from me and i'm along for the ride mm -hmm. and that dude was he was a savage absolute mm -hmm. savage and and i don't think it would have happened as quickly without him yeah you know? and that's on the importance of teams right is that you can come in with the vision you can be the leader with the vision you can't execute alone right right you need people like that that are ready to I'm, I'm here. I'm, yeah. I'm ready to go. Let's go. You just tell me where we're going and I'm there. I'm That's with it. you. As, as important it is, as it is to have the people like that, it's equally as important to get rid of the poisonous ones because Absolutely. you'll, you'll be dragging them with you like an anvil, get rid of them. Mm -hmm. You can't, mm -hmm. if you can't fix them, you do have to get rid of them. It sucks, but it's necessary, you know? Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, and then, you know, even like Mastriani Bakery, oh, I mean, that was a disaster. Of, of, I mean, the company was going out of business in, in mm -hmm. 30 days and I took over and mm -hmm. we saved the company and, you know, we closed it, opened it, purchased it, but it was a miracle. Um, and that was, that was without really having the right people on the team. It was just brute force mm -hmm. to make it work. <laughs> it, it needed to be done, you know? Yeah. What, what did you have to do? I mean, it, it, I don't even know where to begin. Honestly, the place mm. was just in such disarray. It was such a wonderful company, but it was it was just a very poorly run. So mm. I had to make hard decisions. I did terminate people. We did. We added all new products. We went mm. back to a better recipe, which meant more expensive. But we went on business development grind, like go get new business. And we were successful in adding a million and a half dollars in annual revenue in the first year. Um, and just doing everything, we rebranded the whole company from it. It didn't even have a brand. <laughs> it's, mm -hmm. it's, yeah. So we rebranded it. I mean, every single thing we had to touch and it was, it was brute force. It had mm -hmm. the pushed everything it was breakneck pace 
but yeah. it needed to be done and, and we didn't have time. They were, they were going out of business mm -hmm. in 30 days. Mm -hmm. So, right. um, and then eventually it got sold and, you know, it's been sold again since then, but mm -hmm. it, it, at least it stayed alive. So I think the the theme among those two scenarios that you just explained, as well as the work that you currently do with your clients now is the benefit of a new perspective, right? Mm -hmm. There is something to be said for having someone who's kind of one step outside or new to in the, you know, in the, your horizon and master mm -hmm. examples, right? You're sort of new to the scenario there, but you're able to provide that new perspective to the challenge. Yeah. Yeah. I change is, is it's absolutely inevitable and I'm going to come in mm -hmm. and I'm going to, I look at things and look, I, I'm 56 years old. I've done things a few times in my life. So you walk in, you, you pretty much can see the answers right away. Yeah. Right. Um, relatively quickly. And now you've got to do it in a way that's delicate enough that you Look, you're going to step on toes. You're going to, I absolutely will piss some people off every so often. Right. It's going to happen because yeah. you're bringing in change and they don't like mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the change is because of them mm -hmm. and they, re and it affects them and they don't like that, but it has yeah. to be done. So you come in different perspective, different eyes yes. um, and, and making the decisions that absolutely need to be made. And, mm -hmm. and the great part is it's, I'm kind of giving the owners of the company that courage saying, okay, it's okay. You need to do this. Right. It's yeah. okay. Because really they wouldn't bring you in if they didn't want to truly make a change anyway. Yep. 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 And I did have a client who brought me in and, and, and I made a bunch of changes and they said, just do whatever you need to do, run this place, fix it. And I did. And, and it, you know, there were two people on the team that really didn't like what I was doing. Meanwhile, it was 30 that loved it. Mm -hmm. Um, but the owner of the company was not really, wasn't courageous enough to stick to it, mm. right? Most of them are absolutely, they are starving for better accountability, better yeah, right. practices, do, making smart decisions. They're starving for it and they just need somebody to say it's okay, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah. And speak, speak to a little bit about what happens when you have someone who's dragging their feet that doesn't want to come along that scenario of you've got two bad eggs and everybody else is on board. What do you do in that scenario? Um, I do. And I've had that conversation. And here's the good news. In, in most cases, I will say this in most cases, I'll say seven out of 10 times clients will have, they'll drag their feet. They, they, they want the change, but they, it's hard. And right. right. Yeah. So, so they'll drag their feet, but most of them eventually get there pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. Um, the other ones for the most part get there. It just takes a lot of prodding, a lot of confidence building and we get there. Mm -hmm. I've only had one, I think only one that fought me tooth and nail. Okay. But what I tell every one of them is, look. And was that a leader or was that a, a colleague at a company? Yes, <laughs> it was both. <laughs> so, okay. So you had, you had people that were behind the scenes applauding the changes, begging, thank you. Oh, my God, did we need this? And then a couple of people that they didn't, they didn't, they didn't like that change, you know, and I think that impacted the, the leader. Um, mm. But most of them, most of them are when they do drag their feet a bit, and I will say this, I say, you brought me here for a reason. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not saying I have all of the answers, but I have a lot of them. And for your company, this is, these are the answers and you know it. Yeah, you're, right. You're just, you're just dragging your feet because you're worried that if you make this decision, a bad thing will happen. And I have news for you, a bad thing will happen, but it'll be over quickly. And then all the good stuff follows. What you're doing is you're keeping this thing the way you do it and bad things happen every day and they will continue to happen every day. Mm -hmm. Right? Rip the bandaid off, make the right decision, deal with the pain of the first two months or whatever it takes. Yep. And, then, and then they always look back and they say, I cannot believe where we've come. Man, you're singing my song because I remember yeah. I've been through I've been in it. You know, I've been there yeah. where 
we delayed and delayed and delayed. We knew we needed to do something and the writing was on the wall and we kept talking about it again and again and again. And then it, because we wanted to avoid the short-term pain, yes. right? We were trying, but we knew we, that we had to endure that in order to get to the long-term success that we need, we needed. And it was when we, we have, when we doubled down and did the thing that we needed to do yeah. and then looked back on it, like you said, it was exactly what you explained, man, it's I'm glad we did that. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's so unbelievable how short term pain can be such an insurmountable ob obstacle I know. for so many right. people. Mm -hmm. Right. It's like, you know, if, if I told you stick your hand in that, in that hole in the floor, there, <laughs> there's, 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 $50,000 in there. But there's also a mouse trap that's going to snap on your hand. Do you know how many yeah, people right. would not stick their hand in there? <laughs> right? Yeah. Like, I mean, that's, that's right. what it is. That short-term pain keeps a lot of people yeah. from making the right decision. Mm -hmm. Yep. Speaking of short-term pain, um, you do a really cool program called We Peak. Yeah. Can you that's talk fun. about that? Yeah, that's, that's fun. Um, that was a... You know, I, I found early in my career, my consulting career, that leaders they were stuck in the in the business, and mm -hmm. and when I and they were stressed out, and I'd be trying to have a meeting with them, and the doors open or the phones ring, and they're checking their phone, mm. people are walking in and out. I'm like, how do you have time to just process things and think? Mm -hmm. So, I took. I used to, I still do. I hike a lot. And I know that when I'm hiking, my mind is never more open, never more clear. Totally. Now I don't feel stress in my life to begin with, but you put me on a mountain and there's just no stress. So I thought about it and I said, I'm going to bring entrepreneurs together. So that's what I do. I bring leaders and entrepreneurs up. We go hiking. It's not a killer hike. It's usually a relatively, I don't want them. I don't want to kill them. So the, you know, <laughs> relatively easy hikes and Sometimes it's a group from a corp, from a company that says, hey, bring these six people up and team build, teach mm -hmm. them leadership. Or it's for entrepreneurs who never met each other. And I bring them together and we discuss leadership at the top of a mountain. It's really mm -hmm. cool stuff. And then afterwards, you know, there's lunch and beer and all that good stuff. So, yeah, yeah. Continues at the bottom of the mountain. That's yep. awesome. I would love to end with one of your favorite moments from working with your clients over the years? Man, favorite moment. That's a really hard one. I mean, I, I've, I worked with Death Wish Coffee early in my career. Uh, I was a consultant for them for two and a half years. And to see them grow from this small little ragtag team in Saratoga, oh, yeah. New York, to the national and even global success that they have had and working with that feisty group um, was really cool. Um, I mean, I look at Brooks Barbecue as another client of mine who and he was struggling to get certain things accomplished and he and he he did it. I don't know if I have a favorite because it's the each leader. I like the part when they're this part where we're ramping up and the company's building and growing. I, I love that space. Mm -hmm. right? yeah. And then there's always this tipping point. And it's usually about then that I get fired, right? So they're, <laughs> they're learning, growing, and then they have the epiphany and they, they figure it out. They mm. figure out these things that they need They understand what true great leadership is. And I know that they've arrived and they're not going to ever go backwards. I, I honestly, it's, it's hard to pick one because there have been many. I love that part. It's kind yeah. of like your kids, right? You watch your mm -hmm. kids, you, you nurture your kids and you worry about them. And then one day they go off to college and you worry. And then at some point they're going to do something or say something that just hits you and you go, they got it. They know, yeah. they know exactly. And right. I've done my job. And that's mm -hmm. kind of what I geek out about with, with the, because I do the leadership coaching and then I do I offer business consulting. So there's mm -hmm. two different pieces. One is on the individual. The other one is really on the company. Right. You know, so. Yeah, which is and, unique. And that's super important 
for those things to go hand in hand. I mean, I remember a couple of years ago being really stuck with, I felt like we were just on this hamster wheel that yeah. we were running and running and what is it all for? And feels like we're not making any money. And it was more than just my ability to lead the team, yeah. but it was about the work that we were doing and what we were charging and who we were bringing in and why. And, you know, yeah. once we figured that out, while also working on the leadership, that was yep. really the secret sauce. Yeah, and I have these seven principles that I believe in. That's kind of, like, I don't coach out of a book. I mm -hmm. coach from 20 some odd years of experience. Plus, oh, I worked with 50 companies who made it. So I, I right. learned a few things, right? So I, I, it's not really like a, a book. It's just mm -hmm. all the knowledge. And then I look at each person and each company who has individual needs. And then you, you go through the, the, the encyclopedia in my, in my head and you say, okay, for this person, this works, right? Right. But there's these seven principles that I believe in. And, and that's kind of what guides me in, in, in leading people, right? And in, in coaching them. And, and it's very cool when you see them understand those seven principles and, and make the start make their decisions from that, you know? Yeah. Right. And really internalize them. Right. Not just understand what they mean, but like they get it. In, yeah. Right. They get it. Yeah. yeah. It, it clicks. Like you said, that's great. Warren, thank you for this. Really appreciate you sharing these stories. Yeah. Um, especially with your, like I said, your experience in the industry, I think is great to give that lens to some food and ag brands as well as the other founders out there. So yeah. thanks for your time. I've always loved the food business. It's a, it's, it's a grind and worth every single second. Thank you for listening to Spilled Salt. I'm Maureen Bellatori. For more information about the podcast, visit www.agency-29.com. If you have questions for me or you'd like to recommend a guest for a future episode, you can send a message using the contact form on the website. Like and subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts so you never miss an episode.